Welcome along to part three of our video tutorial series where we are learning how to create a maze game in Scratch. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is looking at changing from level to level. And the way we get from level to level is by hitting this green button down here, which is a portal. Let me give you an example of how it works. So we move our character through the maze, and when he gets down near the bottom here, hit the portal, it takes us to the next level. So it's as simple as that. We've got one portal in each level right up until the end of the game. Okay, so let's get started by heading over to Scratch. And you should have your project open from what you've been working on previously, where we've just got Pico, the little character there, walking throughout the maze. If he hits a wall, it takes us back to the start. That's all we've coded up so far. So let's get started on this portal. First thing you need to do is go down to your sprite list here, hit the blue button, and we're going to be loading in button one, which is the green shape here. This is our portal. And when you load it in, it comes out a little bit too big, so I want you to change its size from 100% down to 50% and press enter. And I then want you to position it where you would like it to go on level one. So I want mine down in the bottom right hand corner. When you're positioning your portal, make sure you position it in a spot that's a bit challenging for the user to get to. If I was to put my portal, say, here, it's obviously way too easy because the user just has to go straight down and they finish the level. By putting it over here in the bottom right corner, they've actually got to work their way through some tricky parts of the maze to get to that portal before it takes them to the next level. So by keeping it a little bit challenging, it will engage your player a little bit more in the game and make them want to continue playing. Okay. So once we've got that portal in, first thing I want to do is just um, rename it down the bottom from button one to portal. While we're at it, we might as well rename Pico from Pico Walking to just Pico. And back on the portal, we want to go to the events tab and bring out when the green flag is clicked. So when we start our game, we want to tell it to put the portal in this bottom right corner. And to do that, we simply go to motion, and drag out, go to X and Y. And just check that your X and Y coordinates match up with the current X and Y coordinates over here in the sprite properties, which they do, so that's all good. When we start our game, we should have our green portal on level one heading to that bottom right hand corner. Perfect. Next thing I want to do is get it positioned appropriately for level two and level three. So if you remember in our backdrops, we have got this galaxy for level two, we've got the moon for level three. And we need to put the portal into appropriate positions onto these levels as well. Okay, so first thing we need to do is actually create a variable. We want the game to keep track of which level we are currently on. And that way it will know when it needs to move the portal. So when we go to level two, it's gonna to move to this position. When we go to level three, it'll move to that position. Okay, so go to variables and make yourself a variable called level. Remember variables are like buckets that hold information and in today's um, video we are holding the information of which level we are going to be on. Now once that pops in, the first thing I want you to do is set the level to 1. Okay, It's currently on 0 but we don't have a level 0. We want it to start on level 1. So I'm going to make a new sprite to do this actually. Go down to your sprites here and we're going to paint a sprite. And we're not actually going to paint anything, it's just going to be an empty sprite. Go back to your code, rename that sprite to controller. It's basically just a sprite that um, has a few things in the code that will help set up our game. Okay, And the first thing we want to put into this controller is um, that the level should start at level 1 and not level 0. So under events, when the green flag is clicked, Go to variables and choose the option that says set level to zero and change that zero to one. So now when we start our game, we actually start on level one. Okay, so it's just a bit of, I don't know, something in the, running in the background there to keep our game um, running smoothly. So now that our computer knows which level we're on, we're then able to code up the position of these portals. So what I'm going to get you to do is go to the backdrops and then go to the backdrops tab up here and change over to the galaxy backdrop and then you'll need to go back to your portal and the code and we're going to bring out an if then statement and it's just going to say if we're on level two then we're going to move to these coordinates for the portal so under operators we're just going to bring out this green one under variables we need to bring out the level variable so if the level 
equals 2. Then, under motion, we're going to move to these x and y coordinates. Now, on level 2, I'm going to move my um, portal. Where can I move him to? He's going to be starting down here. So I might move it over here. Okay, so that's going to be my new spot for my portal in level 2. So I need to make sure these x and y coordinates match the current x and y coordinates here. So it'll be 209 for the x and minus 6 for the y. Okay, you'll probably have different numbers to me with wherever you put your portal, but that's just um, what mine is going to be. Now I need to do the same again for level 3. So I'm just going to right click on this yellow part of the code and duplicate it and paste it in below. And I'm just going to change where it says if level equals 2 to level equals 3. And we're just going to change the x and y coordinates again. So I'm going to go over to my stage here and click the backdrops tab and change over to the third backdrop, which is the moon. I'll then go back to the portal, back to the code tab, and I'm going to move my portal to the top right. That's where I would like my portal position for the final level. So make sure that the x value matches this x value, which is going to be 201. And the y is 140, so I'm going to change the y value to 140. Okay, so the computer will now know if we're on level 2, move our um, portal to wherever it needs to go. If we're on level 3, move to those coordinates. Now this will only work if it's wrapped up in a forever loop. Okay, so make sure you wrap it all up inside a forever loop. The reason we put a forever loop in there is if we were to run it without it, it runs these two lines of code just like that really quickly and then the computer just stops and forgets about them. But if we've got forever around these if statements, the computer is always listening out and waiting for this level variable to tick over to level 2. And when it does, it will move our portal into position. And it will keep listening out and waiting and waiting until our level changes to 3 and then it will move our portal to its new position. Okay, so that looks good. We should have our portal in position now on all three levels. If you were to test it, it's obviously not going to work yet because we haven't actually coded up what should happen if Pico runs into this portal. Okay, there's still a few things we need to code up, like playing a sound, just to let the user know that they've done something right and we're changing levels. Uh, we actually need to tell this variable up here to change from level 1 to level 2 and level 2 to level 3. We also want to switch the backdrop over. So remember, as I just showed you before, we don't want to stay with the stars the whole time. We actually want to switch to different mazes with different backdrops to keep the game interesting. Okay, so there's still a few things we need to do. And we're going to need to code them up on Pico. So head over to Pico and give yourself a bit of room because we've got a fair bit of code that's about to come in. Okay, um, so we're going to bring out from events when the green flag is clicked. When the green flag is clicked, we need to check if we are touching the portal. Let me just go back to level 1 here so it's a bit easier to see. There we go. We need to check if we're touching the portal. And if we are, what level are we on? Because that's going to determine a few other factors. Okay, so let's bring out an if-then statement. We'll just snap it in there. We need to work out if we're touching the portal first, so that's under sensing. We bring out the first one, instead of touching the mouse pointer, we need to work out if we're touching the portal. But not only that, we also want to see if we're on level 1. So we'll need to go to operators and bring out this equal sign. And under variables, bring out the level variable and drop it into the first box. Put level equals 1. And we need to wrap both of these up inside an AND block. So if we are on level 1 and we're touching the portal, what do we want to happen? Okay, first thing, I want to play a sound to show that the user has completed that level and they're about to move on to the next level. So head up to your sounds tab and just hit the blue button at the bottom to load in a new sound. There's one called magic spell that I think sounds pretty good. Sounds like a positive sound that uh, makes you feel like you've done something right. So let's play that sound. So under sounds here, grab the start sound magic spell. So that's the first thing that's going to happen when we hit that portal. Second thing I want to do is change our level. So up here, this variable, I want to change it by 1. So change level by 1. So that'll make it level 2. Uh, when, it, when it does become level 2, we want to switch this backdrop out and bring in the next backdrop. So under looks, 
there is an option to switch the backdrop and we're currently on stars the second one which is level two is the galaxy so we're going to switch the backdrop to the galaxy and from there we just need to get Pico into his um, starting position for level two which we actually coded up in our last tutorial which is just here actually minus 211 and minus 151 so I'm just going to copy that by duplicating it and dropping that in there so that moves Pico into his new start position um, and that's probably about it I would say now we're going to need to wrap that up inside a forever loop so that's always going to work Okay, that doesn't look too bad. I'm just going to test that and see if that actually does anything. We'll move Pico down. Perfect. So that took us on to the next level. Looks good. Um, what we can do is actually repeat this. It's fairly similar for level 2 and level 3. Actually, a little bit different for level 3, but we'll do level 2 by duplicating this. So let's right-click and duplicate that if statement. So this is the chunk of code that we want to redo. And it just goes inside the forever loop down below the other if statement. This time we're going to change it to say if level equals 2 and touching the portal. What do we want to happen? We're still going to play the same spell um, sound. We're going to change the level by 1. That's all good. We're going to switch our backdrop. Not the galaxy this time. We want to go to level 3, which is the moon. So change over to the moon. And our go to x and y needs to be changed to this one here. So let's duplicate that and drop it in down the bottom there. That should have Pico head to the right position for level 3. Okay, that looks good. Last of all though, level 3. Once we finish level 3, that's it, it's game over. So we're going to slightly change what we do here. I'll still duplicate this if statement, but we're going to take a few bits and pieces out. So we'll change the level to 3. If level equals 3 and we touch the portal, Let's get rid of that magic spell sound and replace it with another sound like we've won the game. So up in sounds, let's choose a new one. I think it's called win. There it is. Just a slightly different sound because something different's happening. So let's play a different sound. So we're going to change our spell sound to the win sound. Uh, we'll still change our level by one. That'll take us to level four basically, which is the end of our game. We'll switch the backdrop from the moon to the nebula, which is the last backdrop we've got in our game. And we don't need to go to any coordinates. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And we might just drop that inside the forever loop, but below the other if statements. Okay, so hopefully you can see what we've got there now. When the green flag is clicked, we're always going to be listening out for when these three events occur. Basically switching levels. Let's just have a quick test run. I'm just going to, um, whoops, I'm just going to drag Pico over to these positions just to save a bit of time, save me going through the maze. But that worked well. That went through all three levels and takes us to the very end to show that we have won the game. So that looks good. One thing I just realized is I haven't put this cool color effect on the portal yet to make it um, look fancy. I just want to do that now very quickly. So under this block of code here, when the green flag is clicked, what I want you to do is go to looks and there's an option to change the color effect by 25. If you wrap that up in a forever loop, it's going to change the color of our portal. Okay, constantly change our color, the color of our portal throughout the game. So I'm going to wrap that up in a forever loop and just snap it in up here. And if we give it a run now, watch this portal change color. Okay, it's happening pretty quick. It's a little bit fast for my liking. So I'm going to change that number 25 down to, say, 5. And when you run your game, you'll see you get a slower color effect. If you want, you can even turn it into the negatives for that color effect to reverse itself, like so. Okay, so that makes it look a little bit better, I think, just by, um, just by adding that color effect into the portal. So the final thing that I want to happen in our game is when we hit that final screen, that final backdrop that says that we've won, I want our portal here to disappear off the page. There's no reason for it to still be on the page, so I'm going to hide it. And to do that, I'm going to go over to my controller sprite, and I'm going to go to events and bring out when the green flag is clicked again. 
We're going to do an if then statement. So under control, just bring out an if then. And we need to ask if we are on level four. So if the level equals four. So if our variable level is ticked over to number four, then we're going to go to events and we're going to broadcast a message. It's not going to be message one. Give it a new message with a more meaningful name, like game over. So if our level variable, this one up here, ticks over to number four, we're going to send a message out to all the sprites in our game that tells them the game is over. Nothing actually happens when they get that message. We actually have to do a bit more coding there, but it's going to send a message out at least to all the sprites so they know that the game has finished. Now I need to wrap this up in a forever loop so the computer is always listening out and waiting for this level variable to tick over to number four. Okay, we can go back to the portal now and under events, drag out the block of code that says when I receive game over. So when our portal receives that message that our game is over, all we want it to do is, in our looks, choose the hide button. Oh, button script, sorry. So that will hide our portal once it gets to the end of our game. Let's just quickly test that. Bring Pico down. Level 1's done. Level 2's done. And here we go. When we go to level 4 now, there. you'll see that our portal has disappeared off the page. We might as well hide Pico as well. So to do that, we just drag this block of code and drop it on Pico and that will just copy and paste it over to Pico. So when he gets the message that the game is over, he will also hide himself. Now the issue you're going to have is when you start the game again, the portal's missing. And if we run to the end with Pico as well, he'll be missing too. We actually need to go back to our very first blocks of code in Pico and the portal and make sure we bring in show. So when we start our game, we actually show Pico same with the portal. When we start our game, we want to show the portal. Let's just test that again. There we go. The portal's back. We can now run through our maze very quickly here. And hopefully those two will disappear. Perfect. So this um, variable level 4 up here now, we don't need to see that on our screen anymore. It was just there while we were testing our game out. So we can go to our variables here and uncheck the level box. And that's it. You now know how to change levels in your maze game. Okay, in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some items that we can collect to earn ourselves some points, like some little crystals. Okay, so I'll catch you in that video.